Welcome to Chemistry Masters channel, in this class I am introducing the concept of activity and activity coefficient of electrolytes in solution, many students find this concept difficult to understand, we will have a simple introduction. You know that, electrolytes are substances which produce ions in solution. Those substances which produce a large number of ions in solution are called strong electrolytes. For example, potassium chloride in water. On the other hand, those substances which produce only a small number of ions in solution are called weak electrolytes. Strong electrolytes are assumed to be completely ionized in solution. Just think about a solution, which is produced from a strong electrolyte, or a weak electrolyte, or even from a non-electrolyte. For explaining the behavior of such a solution, we use two new terms, the activity and the activity coefficient. The concept of activity was introduced by G. N. Lewis in 1907. His intention was to study about non-ideal solutions in the same mathematical way as that used for ideal solutions. In fact, to study the deviation from ideal behavior. A simple example for non-ideal solutions are the ionic solutions. Even though such solutions deviate much from ideal behavior, they move very near to ideal behavior, when they are extremely diluted. Theoretically at infinite dilution. Since our discussion is mainly focused on electrochemistry, let us consider the conductance of an electrolyte solution. It will be the sum of the conductance values of all the ions that are present in the solution. Consequently, we expect that the molar conductivity should increase if we increase the concentration of the ions. But experiments show the opposite. The molar conductivity will be maximum at infinite dilution. Remember, there are other factors which also affect the conductance value of electrolyte solutions. Similar deviations could also be observed in the case of other thermodynamic properties of the solution. The reason for near ideal behavior at infinite dilution could be explained in the following way. When the solution is very dilute there may not be any electrostatic interaction among the solute molecules or ions. Each solute molecule or ion has its own random movement in the solution. Thus, each species fully participates in exhibiting the bulk behavior of the solution. This we call as the ideal behavior. We can explain this by taking an example of a playground and two groups of athletes who are running in opposite directions. The whites run towards left, while the reds run towards right. Both the groups start at the same whistle and reach their respective finishing lines. Start Here we have, only 4 plus 4 8 athletes. The two groups ran in opposite directions and reached the respective finishing points without many collisions. We can say that all the 8, are effective racers. This is the case with an ideal solution. All the ions or molecules present are effective in producing the bulk property of the solution. However, when the solution is more concentrated, the electrostatic interaction between the ions become non-negligible. In this condition the movement of ions are no longer independent of each other. Therefore, only a portion of the concentration contributes to the bulk property of the solution. This portion is called activity. In simple language we call it as effective concentration. Activities are defined in such a way that they are dimensionless quantities. Let us return to the playground with more athletes. Let there be 10 numbers on either side. Thus, we have 20 people. Let us see what happens when the start signal is given. Start. Here only, 6 plus 6, 12, reached the finishing line. But, 4 plus 4, 8, collided with each other and could not reach the destination. This happened, 
because of the overcrowding of athletes compared to previous case. Here out of 20 athletes only 12 were effective runners. This is analogous to a concentrated solution. In a concentrated solution, only a part of the ions present is effective in providing the bulk property of the solution. We call this effective concentration, activity. This is the reason for the deviation from ideal behavior. To denote the extent of deviation from ideal behavior, we use another term called, activity coefficient. When the activity is same as the concentration, activity coefficient will be unity. This represents ideal behavior. Concentration is expressed in molality, since it is independent of temperature. Activity is denoted by lowercase letter a and the activity coefficient is denoted by the lowercase Greek letter, gamma. A fundamental property of activity is its equivalence to chemical potential, this is given by the following equation. Sir, could you please explain the term chemical potential? Okay, only a brief explanation. In simple language, chemical potential is the escaping tendency of a species in a system, the systems that we consider may be pure substances or mixtures like solutions, making it more scientific, it is a measure of the potential, that a substance has for making changes in the system. You know, potential simply means the capacity to develop into something in future. In the language of thermodynamics, it is the partial molar Gibbs energy. When two phases of a single substance are in equilibrium with each other, then the chemical potentials of the substance in the two phases will be equal. The superscript, zero refers to chemical potential of pure component. It depends on temperature and pressure. It is assumed that the effective concentration of a component determines the extent to which it influences or acts in determining the equilibrium properties of the solution. So, we use activity instead of mole fraction in equation 1. Now, let us think about the ionization of an electrolyte, which dissociates in the following manner producing positive and negative ions. Here nu plus, is the number of positive ions produced and nu minus, is the number of negative ions produced. Nu is the total number of ions generated. We now introduce the concept of ionic activities and ionic activity coefficients. We can write down the activity of undissociated electrolytes in terms of ionic activities. For example, the activity of undissociated magnesium chloride could be written as the product of activities of magnesium and chloride ions. Even though we defined activity in terms of ion activities, practically they cannot be measured. One ionic species, deriving from a dissolved electrolyte, cannot on its own determine properties of a system, it will always do so in concert with an equivalent number of oppositely charged ions. It is therefore only possible to use a form of activity or activity coefficient which takes account of both type of the ions characteristic of the electrolyte. Such forms are known as mean activities and mean activity coefficients. These are represented as A plus or minus and gamma plus or minus. The mean ionic activity is the geometric mean of ionic activities. Similarly, the mean activity coefficient is the geometric mean of the individual coefficients. See how we express it?
Sir, what does geometric mean? Geometric mean is a special type of average, where we multiply the numbers together and then take a square root, if there are two numbers, cube root, if there are three numbers, and so on. For example, take 2 and 18. Upon multiplication, we get 36, and taking square root we get 6. Again, squaring 6 gives 36. See the following. From equations, 2, and, 3, we can arrive at the following, which we denote as equation, 5. The activity of each ion may be written as the product of activity coefficient and concentration, here we use molality. Therefore we get. Substituting these expressions for gamma plus and gamma minus in equation, 4, we get. Equation, 7, gives an expression for mean activity coefficient. Now, carefully watch the following steps leading to final equation for calculating activity. Finally, we got an equation for calculating activity of an electrolyte from mean activity coefficient and molality. Let us do some calculations based on this. For uni-univalent electrolytes like sodium chloride, potassium chloride etc. the number of positive and negative ions are one each, and the charge on each ion will be unity. Hence equation, 12, become. For sodium sulfate we calculate activity in the following way. Let's take one more example, copper sulfate. Experimentally observed values of mean activity coefficients of some electrolytes in aqueous solution at 25 degrees Celsius are shown in the following table.
The mean activity coefficient varies considerably with concentration for different electrolytes. It has been observed that the values always decrease as concentration is increased, reaches a minimum and then increases at remarkably high concentrations. Different electrolytes behave differently at high concentrations. For example, in the given table, the values show an increase at one molal concentration for HCl and calcium chloride. Another concept, that we cannot ignore while studying activity is the ionic strength, represented by mu or uppercase letter I. The ionic strength of a solution is a measure of the electrical intensity, or strength, due to the presence of ions in the solution. It is given as, half of the sum of all the terms obtained by multiplying the molality of each ion by the square of its valence. In other words, ionic strength is the collective measure of both charge on the ion as well as its concentration in the solution. Mathematically it is given by the following summation. The sum extends over all the ions in solution. Ionic strength is usually expressed as a dimensionless quantity. Ionic strength and activity coefficient are related through the debye huckel limiting law. We now work out a problem related to ionic strength and activity coefficient. Let us calculate the mean activity coefficient in aqueous solution of potassium chloride of known concentration. First let us calculate the ionic strength. Potassium chloride is a uni-univalent electrolyte. For aqueous solutions at 25 degrees Celsius, a equals 0 0.509. Therefore, from Debye Huckel limiting law, we have the experimental value is 0 0.927, which is very near to the calculated value. I have given only a brief explanation of activity, activity coefficient and ionic strength. I hope this introduction may give you a motivation to learn more about these topics. I suggest the following books. 1. An Introduction to Electrochemistry, Samuel Glaston. 2. Principles and Applications of Electrochemistry, D. R. Crow. 3. Atkins Physical Chemistry, Peter Atkins and Julio de Paula. 4. Physical Chemistry, G.W. Castellan. If you like the video please share and subscribe my channel, thank you.